today on Divorce Court. I'm having a lot of relationship problems with my wife and her team. I feel like a lot of the issues in my relationship are due to the fact that my family abandoned me. I feel that it causes a lot of my infidelity and I seek love from other females. I gave her multiple chances. I'm not allowing it no more. If it happened again, I'm done. I want the judge to tell Michelle everyone makes mistakes and my mistakes are based upon what I went through growing up. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Teriana Hoskins-Brown and Michelle Brown. The two of you have been together for five years, married for the last two, but there are complications and considerations, and you have come to me to help work them out. Ms. Ms. Hoskins-Brown, I'm going to call you Ms. Hoskins, just for, for ease of reference, OK? Ms. Hoskins, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and, and why you believe you're having difficulty today? Well, I met Michelle in 2012. Um, I actually met her, started off talking to her through a fake page. I was a catfish. I was using someone else's pictures to look for love, thinking, you know, she would like me for the looks. Mm -hmm. um, who's pi don't say who like as in person, but what did the person look like that whose picture you used? She, <laughs> she was light-skinned. She had, like, real cur curly hair. She dressed like a guy like I did as uh -huh. well. Um, she had, had colored eyes. Uh, How long did you, were you catfishing her before she figured it out or before you told her? Um, I only catfished her for about probably a month or so or two mm -hmm. months at tops, maybe. And then you told? No, I didn't tell her right away. It probably was like a year or two before I even told her that was me behind the page. But behind the page, yeah. okay. Ms. Brown, uh, yes, ma'am. How long did you, did you uh, communicate? with Ms. Hoskins before you found out she was catfishing you? Um, well, I found out about the fake... I didn't know it was a fake page at first. We were just conversating. And then, after a while, like, when me and her got back together, probably 2014, she finally told me it was a fake page. And it was her the whole time. So she met you as the catfish person, but also met you in as herself. Yeah. And then, finally, she told you that both of those were the well, same person. Well, we met personally uh -huh. first. And then the catfish started. Oh, happening. I got you. I got you. Why did you do that? I mean, when you met personally first, did, we, did you get along? Why did you feel the need to, to catfish her? Trying to get some money, and it wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Were you trying to get some money, and it didn't work? Um, I did ask her for money at the time. I mean, I'm young, and she was older, and I didn't have a job, so I mean. So why not? Why not? Anyone. <laughs> yeah. Were you angry when you found out? No, I laughed. Didn't matter? It, it really didn't because the conversation didn't go nowhere. It wasn't like we spent hours as right. this person talking. Right. Like, she tried to conversate, and we was conversating, but it didn't go that far. Did anybody in your family or, you know, either, either side when you were raised have problems with the fact that you were a lesbian, or did they, did yes. they know? Family members called call me distresses all the time about being lesbian. Um, mm. Are you still attached to any family no, other I than your wife, Mrs. Brown? Talk to any family at all to this day. So she's it as far as family yes. is concerned, is Correct. Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown, how's your relationship with your family? Is it good? Um, I wouldn't say it's good, but I wouldn't say it's bad. I got certain family members that I'm mm. closer to than others. Right, right. Some accept it, some don't. Right. Gotcha. What do you say is the primary problem in this relationship? Our communication and her not being honest about things. Like, I'm the type of person I would prefer for you to tell me how you feel or what's going on or whatever the case may be, then me having to go do what I do to find out information on what you're doing. So she doesn't tell you the truth. You got to go look and investigate and figure out what's going on. I am Detective Shell. Uh -huh. and I get down to the bottom of everything. Well, what kind of things do you do to detect the truth? Well, I Hack reset Google accounts, I <laughs> reset Facebook, I pretend like I'm her and talk to the females. Yes, I get down to the bottom of everything. Nothing is gonna slack. Is she having inappropriate conversations with other women? Yeah. Is that true, Ms. Hoskins? Yeah. Mm. Mrs. Hoskins, why? 
Um, basically, like she said, there's no communication, and if I feel like I can't talk to her, I go to another woman, woman to talk to them. Why do you feel there's no communication? What do you think the communication problem is? Um, man, everything. I, I don't, f I, f I feel like... She says you're a hothead. Is that true? I am. I'm a hothead. Um, I... You know, that doesn't encourage people to confide in you. If, 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 if they confide in you and you blow up, that kind of keeps them from talking to you. And I tell her that you, all the time. You, you're on top of that, right? Yeah, but You some, understand that? Yeah, sometimes I just don't agree with the stuff she say, and I take it and get hot-headed about it, mm -hmm. you know, which is wrong, but I mean, I, you know, it happens. It happens. She you know you can, you can work on that, right? Yeah. I'm because that's something now. you need to do for you. Yeah. As opposed to just for her. Yes. But you need to do that for you. Uh, she... So, well, I, I want to get into this a little more, so I, I, I'm going to take a moment and, and, and just figure out just how hot you get and all of the things that you do when you do get angry. Well, not just like that, she think I'm up to something. No, like... only if it's the dress is too little or is she trying to do too much in the dress or the skirt, that's when I have an issue or a Well, problem. so she's got to hit a range for you. Yes. It's got to be more than sweatpants, but less than a tight dress. Mrs. Brown, tell me some of the things she says to you when she's angry. You know, I just don't want to say whole certain things. A whole lot yeah. of foul stuff yeah. That, yeah. That, that is, uh... Do you do that? I do it, but not to hurt her. Well, um, why I... do you do it, if not to hurt her? Just to, uh, just to see it. Like, I mean, it gets under her skin, but, like, I, it's just to be the moment. The arguments be so heated to the point that, you know, I just say whatever comes to my brain first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I just want to clarify something for you. You are saying it to hurt her. You know what I mean? You, that, yeah. That's the whole point of it. You're hurt, you're angry, whatever it is, and so you pull out a phrase that you know will, yeah, will, will click her to the it. core. You don't say, you're really short, because it's not true. See, it wouldn't hurt her to say she's short. Right. You know what I mean? You say things that would hurt her. So don't, don't pretend that that's not what you're doing. That's what you're doing, yeah. okay? I understand she also insults your appearance. Is that true? Yeah. What did she say? Um, it's just be different things, like I may not comb my hair a certain day, or I may not feel like putting on clothes, and me, I'm a person, like, as a wife now, and having a seven-year-old, it don't revolve around, oh, let me get cute and all that. It's just more so of, I like being at home. I'm an at-home body, so I dress how I feel. Mm -hmm. And certain things I she don't... say, it bothers me. Right. It really I does. I call her bad. Mrs. Haskin, what, 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 what do you have to say? I'm sorry. I don't, like, insult her appearance, like her weight, her looks, not, nothing like that. Yes, like, I feel like, you know, when we, we're going outside, you know, just put Fix nice... Fix up and, a bit. Like, right, that's all. That's it. That's it. Like, you I don't know, care about weaving her head or any of that. Who like, attention my mother, am my I mother trying told to catch, me though? This once. My mother told me this once after I got married. She said, don't get comfortable. You know, don't get so comfortable that you never worried that whether or not he's looking at you. Right. You always want him to want to look at you. Right. So don't get comfortable. But then when I dress like that, she think I'm up to something. No, like... only if it's the dress is too little or is she trying to do too much in the dress or the skirt, that's when I have an issue or a Well, problem. so she's got to hit a range for you. Yes. It's got to be more than sweatpants, but less than a tight it dress. It be sweatpants, I don't care. That's, that's cute, sweatpants. I mean, mm -hmm. a nice shirt. I, I don't have to, it could be a point, I mean, it, uh, it just, I don't know. I don't know. You, I, do you know what the rules are? There's no rules. <laughs> no rules to dressing. That's what you're saying, no rules to dressing. Well, but you have objections to one end and objections to the other one, so there are rules. You, you may not want to call them that, but when you object to certain things, you have standards you want her to meet, correct? It's not, I wouldn't call them standards. Like, like if we going out if we going outside, like, put a bra on. That's all I'm, like, something, yeah, well, something that's like that. a standard. That. It's like, a simple standard, but it's a standard. You don't like want to, to flop it about. Free. What? I like to be free. You like to be free. Oh, my I Lord, like my it. Lord, my I Lord. Like, 
So I'll, I want to move on to another subject uh, that was brought. It, it, it's not something that you discussed, but it's something that I see. You know, Mrs. Hoskins, you're 22, and Mrs. Brown, you're 28. Yes. So mm -hmm. you've been married since you were 19? Mm -hmm. You're very, very young mm -hmm. to be married. And I want to talk to you about why you got married so young, and do you believe that your age has some, uh, in some way, causes some of the difficulties you have in your marriage? I, even if I did cheat, who admits to cheating? Like, just straight off the back, like, if you Some are... Some folks do. It's well, a divorce court. I've heard it all. Well, well, you did. You married a young one. I did. You did. Do you believe that her maturity and her level of growth is such that it's causing difficulties in your marriage? I don't, honestly, because I was dating her much younger, as you know, than what she was. And she was way more mature then than what she is now. Well, tell me what she's doing now that makes her so immature. Um, just, like, lying, the cheating, just doing stuff that don't make me happy. Yeah. What, when she's cheating, what is she doing? In my book, cheating is cheating. You can... Whether you holding a conversation, whether you telling her she pretty, it's all fall under cheating to me. Mm -hmm. So, she so let me ask you this: Has she ever physically cheated on you, to your knowledge? Yes. No. Yes. Tell me what circumstance you believe uh, in which she physically cheated on you. I mean, I had never met the girl or whatever, and Tariana told me it was a stud and. It really wasn't. It was a female, and she said they did some one time. Teriana denied it. Then she finally told me, yeah, it was one time, and she felt bad about it. Did that happen? No, I never. First of all, who, if I, even if I did cheat, who admits to cheating? Like, just straight off the back, like, if you some are... Some folk do. <laughs> it's well, a divorce court. I've heard it all. Well, well you did. But did you ever cheat on her physically? No. You the, say no. The most I ever did was kiss a female. Okay. That's a lie. Do you cheat on her emotionally? Do you have emotional that's, that's, ties with other women? That's where I cheat on her with when I'm having conversations and, you know, ha with other females that's considered cheating, telling a, a female that I love them or not, you know, that type of stuff. That's what I do. Yeah. Now, do you see that as something wrong, or do you see that as something you should be able to do if, in fact, you're not actually no, doing anything physical? I know it's wrong, but, I mean, like I said, if I don't have any communication with her, going to these other females and them being, like, there was a little bit, you know, that easier to talk to if I'm going through something or whatever. I mean... Well, well, let, let me ask you, when you say you can't communicate with her, if you raise an issue, what happens? Does she simply refuse to talk? Yeah, I mean, she can go days without talking to me, like... So... I'm very stubborn. You can go for days without talking? Yep. What... Give me an example of a subject that is so important that you go for days without talking to her. Um, the last situation, um, where I had somebody stand with me that she was dealing with, um, they kissed or whatever, but the girl told me way much more because she thought I was Teriana. Like mm -hmm. I said, I played oh, you went like... went in as her. Right? Yeah. So she told me she a little more that, that Teriana wasn't telling me. And it just made me flip out on the whole situation mm -hmm. to where I just lost it because I have so much build up inside of me mm -hmm. because of so much I deal with with her that she don't understand Tell that. me what you're dealing with because I'm out here, I'm kind of lost in the ocean. Um... I'm not quite sure what's happening at your house. Um, like, far as conversations, I feel like with communication, we can't communicate because one, take it personal or take it the wrong way that it come out. Like me, I tend to talk too much or talk too fast, and it may come out the way that I didn't mean it, but she'll and take it. And that's what uh, triggered me and make me go off and Give call her. Give me an example of something he said to you that triggered you and made everything go haywire. Like the, like the simple stuff, like, man, both of us are Leos, so we're lions. And 
when when I would you know say something, I'd be like, you know what, you irritated me. You you know I don't care about your attitude. I never you know I don't care. You know you can be mad. You you know things like that. Like Saying that. you don't care about me being irritated or getting irritated. That's not communication. Figure out why I don't care. Uh, you, you know, but figure out why I'm irritated. And I say you don't care. That makes me even more mad. Mrs. Zazen, let me help you for it. You can't. You can't put the onus on somebody else to figure out why you're irritated. Since you know why you're irritated, if the onus is upon you I mean, to tell half it. of the time, she knows why I'm irritated. But, no. They don't know. They're not in your head. Everybody was raised differently. Everybody has different expectations. They have different upbringings. They have different issues. So you can't presume that she would be fully cognizant of your irritations. That's, that, that's like communication one-on-one. I see what part of your problem is. It's more than an age gap, what we have here. It's communication issues, and that's what I want to talk about next. I'm going to say this, because what we're talking about here is two women who can't talk to one another, because there's anger and agitation, there's assumptions, there's a way to have a conversation in which you actually exchange information. When you two contend to have a conversation, all you're doing is exchanging frustrations. You're telling the other person how upset you are, but you're not telling you what you're upset about, why it's upsetting, and how you need to fix it. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes. You guys need to sit down with someone that teaches you how to have a conversation. And a conversation is always an exchange of information. And if you're hooping and hollering, yelling and fussing, it's like writing your point of view on the side of a missile. You may be right, but the truth gets destroyed in the explosion. So you've accomplished nothing whatsoever. So the first fight you have, and any fight you have with someone else, is with yourself. You have to fight your anger, you have to fight your distress, you have to fight your fear, and you have to come across as a rational person. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, the general, I can't even get, you guys are so deep into your inability to communicate, I don't even understand what the nature of the problems are. Because you couldn't communicate them to me. And I don't think you really know what's wrong. I know, you think you know how you feel, but you don't know what's causing that. I mean, the, the communication is what's causing it. No, I mean, no, her... but, 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 but you have to be communicating about something. And you have to know what that something is or else you can't communicate about it. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta know what your ask is, what you're trying to get done. You don't wanna just tell you you're frustrated. You wanna tell her what, she's, what you're frustrated about and what specifically you need her to do to resolve it. Okay. You with me? Yeah. You get me? Yeah. I don't think so, uh -huh. but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you somebody to get you started, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn a thing or two, and we can get you back on the right track. Oh. Best of luck to both of you. This matter is adjourned. today on Divorce Court. Cheating has affected our marriage in a horrible way. He's cheated and I've cheated. Some of the things that she does isn't husband and wife approved, I guess you could say. Calvin feels like I'm not being a wife because I'm not fulfilling, well, his needs as a man. Pretty much as a wife, I just feel like you know, as far as sex, you should, you know, want to be intimate with your husband. You should want to do things with your husband. You know, you should want to do things for your husband. And I just feel like she doesn't do any of that at all. Divorce Court is now in session.
Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Calvin Guy and Nicole Guy. Mr. and Mrs. Guy, you have been together for 14 years, married for eight, you have one child together, and you are in deep trouble. Mr. Guy, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this relationship and why you're here in divorce court today? Well, uh, pretty much my wife and I, uh, Miss Nicole here, we've been together for quite some time. We've had problems, a lot of problems for uh, just her leaving, uh, totally separating herself from me for uh, anywhere from six months to a year at a time. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> going out and having different relationships with different guys and just coming back after things don't work out. Does she leave you for other guys or does she just happen to have relationships once she's gone? I, I've asked her that before mm -hmm. and uh, she's told me that it's not um, her leaving me for the other guys. She's leaving for herself, mm -hmm. but the other guys just so happen to be in a relationship with her when she leaves. Ms. Mrs. Guy, did you hear what he just said? Yes. Is that accurate? It's true. So you have relationships with men during the course of your relationship, and then you leave, and you... Is that um, what's happening? No, what's going on is I will leave, we'll break up, and um, I will get in, not into these relationships. Like, I have friends. Mm -hmm. um, he calls them relationships. They're not relationships. But no. And guy not. friends with whom you have intimacy, though? One. One. Once. Yeah. One. Do you go back and forth to him when things get, get funky at home? I used to. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's a hot mess because you admit to sleeping with at least 20 different women during the course of your marriage, correct? <laughs> <laughs> She's leaving. You know, so I, I can't get too excited about right. her leaving and having a relationship here and there because neither one of you seems to think that fidelity I'm is necessary. I'm surprised about that because I just had three girls in particular you know, in the top of my head. So when he's saying 20 girls and all this other stuff, I mean, I wouldn't put a pass to it because if some other stuff didn't happen too. When I, when, you know, <laughs> when I, when I read your materials, I, I, I got stressed. And I, it, the first thing that stressed me out was your issues with his controlling behavior. You say, like, he locked you in a room and you were fighting from 9 p.m. to 6, day, 6 a.m. and you were fighting so much that he, he was late for work and got fired. I mean, does that kind of thing happen? Because to me, that's, that's frightening. It is. Honestly, it is. And no, he didn't get fired, but um, he seen, I guess, he would go through my phone when I'm sleeping and wake me up in the middle of the night. It will be like, you know, uh, that night I happened to went to bed at 9 p.m. or whatever, uh -huh. and he woke me up and then he was just like, questioning me about this one guy in particular. I'm like, you know, we just having a, a phone conversation. That's my friend. And uh, he's just like, you know what, I seen it kind of getting heated. And he's like, well, just talk to me. I'm like, I'm talking to you. But I feel like he's just so controlling. He doesn't want to hear what I have to say. So I'm trying to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's like blocking the door. Like, because it, it gets crazy, you know. That kind of like make my heart pound because I'm like, uh, you know, what is he thinking? He's getting so angry. His eyes turning red. So. Let me just let him cool down and let me walk gotcha. away. He doesn't let me walk away. Yeah. You also say, I just want to get all this out there because I'm stressed about it. I just want all of these things that are bothering me out there. He said he, you, he flushed your anxiety medicine down the toilet so you couldn't leave the house. If you're dealing with this individual he doesn't like, he calls you retarded and stupid. He gets mad when the house isn't clean. He I'm takes the only half one that your cleans? check. I yes. mean, Mr. Guy, it, it, <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Should I be... Am I concerned for no reason? Yes, ma'am. Pretty much <laughs> in the past, I used to be the things that she says I am, controlling and everything else. We got married when we were, uh, what, 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. I was in the military and I was still trying to figure out life just right. like she was. The cheating that I did in the beginning was all when I was younger. Right. Uh, her, it just kept coming. I mean, <laughs> even even just a week ago. <laughs> just a week ago? Even just a week ago is when I found out um, about her and, and, you know, being on the dating site, her talking to different people over Facebook, her finding these guys and talking to them and then talking down, you know, about me to these people that I don't even know. Is he accurate that the women that he cheated with, that's all in the past when early on in your relationship? No, it's not in our younger days. That was more so recently. And he's been kind of 
having conversations with the girls he didn't slept with and one of the girls in particular. Now she goes to our church and, you know, he's just like talking to her in front of me. Like, that's disrespectful. Like, oh, you know, uh, just forget about that whole thing. He just you want me to, to take it so lightly. Church. Pretty much the, the young lady that she's referring to that goes to the church. No, I do not talk to that young lady. She did call <laughs> she me did. once before and she talked, she tried to talk to me about her relationship issues. I he went to my wife night, and I was told crying. her. She called you and crying about her relationship. She, like he does this to make an excuse to go talk to these people. Oh, see, I'm not doing anything. I can talk to them in front of you and all this other stuff. No, I know you're going behind my back and talking to these like women. I just feel like I have nothing to hide, Your Honor. I gotcha. He's I slick. gotcha. He I'm still scared. Don't know why, but I'm still frightened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk. I understand also that your families get involved, and that's problematic as well. So I want to talk about that. The young lady and, and my wife, from what I'm understanding from her, they wanted to do some type of swinging thing to where she had her guy and the other girl had me. They, I, I knew the swinging thing was was going on in her mind because of <laughs> she actually allowed me to have sex with her friend in front of her. Okay. Did you do that? Like I said, your extended extended family team seems, seems to be a problem, but. Before we get to that, I think I want to put, put a button on the cheating stuff. I understand, in addition to this other church woman, that you had a woman in Bible study who you were sleeping with. Is this true? <laughs> the young lady and, and my wife, from what I'm understanding from her, she, they wanted to do some type of swinging thing to where she had her guy and the other girl had me. What are you talking about? I totally 100% said no. On the whole thing, no, because I don't want to see my wife with some other bro some other guy. <laughs> then the young lady came over to my house and she invited my wife and I over for uh, dinner. My wife declined and then sent me. I didn't send you. That is not true. Her? Not the that that night. I mean, we went over there and we talked. <laughs> oh, I'm playing Bible study. We we went over there and we talked. The young lady was trying to change her life. I was like, yeah, I need to get on the same path. We were having Bible study for a little while. Okay, I've been like inviting my like sister, duck, invited my wife here. Y'all were having Bible study, hey. and you ended up having sex yes. with her. Yes, ma'am. Come on now. But but you know what? That's not that's not it though. I mean, she didn't say anything at first. The, I, I knew the swinging thing was was going on in her mind because of <laughs> she actually allowed me to have sex with her friend in front of her. Okay. Did you do that? I don't remember, but she came over one night. We was drinking, and they were already flirting with each other. Like, she, he already wanted her. He already told me, basically, he wanted to have sex with her. Like, Your Honor. they were so looking at each other. Okay? I just said, go ahead. Like, she, you know, she tried to get me involved. And, you know, they were, you know, they started off kissing or whatever like that. So, I don't know. Like, he You're... tried to pull my hand in. And I just, like, you know, I just didn't. What, just you didn't... weren't into it? I wasn't into it. Your Honor. Yeah. Now, that's not what happened at all. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, I it never, is. I didn't want to be too intimate. So, I was kissing on my wife at the time. While she was allowing me to do whatever to you her was friend. more into her oh than you was. Oh my God! So, he was more into I, her you, than you, he was. I, <laughs> I just couldn't get turned on by the friend knowing that my wife was there and you know. But you managed it. Knows. Yeah, he did. He wanted to. <laughs> he wanted to. I don't even know how this stuff jumps off. I don't know how. I just. They were already giving know, each other that eye, like they wanted each other. So, so I'm like, go ahead, like, you know. But what? I mean. I just, because of, it, it was, to me, I felt like he giving me no choice because every time she come around, it was always compliment that, compliment this. And then well, when I would try. he didn't give me no choice. He didn't give what? me no choice. Like, he was already on her, like, more than he was on me. So I was just like, you know, we was drinking that night. Oh, my God. I've, I've never. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm, give I'm... me a minute. Just, no, just, just give me a minute. I'm going to get myself together, then I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to figure out something. I, I seen text messages to where she was telling people, oh yeah, I'm gonna have the car tomorrow. I'm gonna come by and see you tomorrow. It's where she's going and it's the fact that she's distracted. That's all she does. When she's even driving, when she's driving? Even while she's driving. Are you using social media while you're driving? I'm gonna ask you about your extended family. You say that you bump heads with her family. Tell me about that. Her family members, we used to not get along mm. uh, in the beginning, but it was only because of she would go to them and in the midst of her cheating, I'll get upset, of course. It, 
I'm a husband with a wife who's cheating on me actively. I find out about it. You know, she'll go and tell her family members I'm crazy. I, I go off for no reason. Uh, she's not doing anything wrong. And then they'll look at me like, oh, no, he's a psycho. Mm -hmm. he, he's going to come around and chop all of us up because of that's when Nicole said. <laughs> he's showing them that, though. Like, you know, the first time I left him, um, when we our first for our first apartment or whatever, um, he just got crazy. Like, oh, yeah, you wasn't there for, them, uh, for her and all this other stuff. And they were like, well, we're here now. So, but he was just like going off and throwing my stuff all over the ground and just. Are you a loud and boisterous, angry person? When you get up, I mean, not that you haven't had cause. I mean, clearly oh, she'd yeah. been cheating on you, and I know that's very upsetting. But in general, are you a, a, an angry and rageful person? Not anymore. I used to be. <laughs> uh, I actually attended a bunch of counseling and everything else about five or six years ago now. To get it together? Yes, ma'am, because of I wanted my family back together. So I wanted to Has he improved? Not with the controlling. Like, it's, it, it, it would be Give good. me an example of when he's controlling. Uh, like, his car. Like, Tell me about um, that. He doesn't really let me drive his car like that. Like, and when he does, he tells me where he, like, okay, I drop him off at work or whatever, and then if I want to make a detour and go to my auntie's house, then it's a problem. It's an argument. Like, I don't like that. Like, he wants me to come straight home. Your yeah. response to that? Your Honor, I actually submitted uh, evidence of a vehicle that she. Uh, do I is, have it? I, I'm I, just, I think I, I don't know. Did it, you? That's not okay. I sent it in. Okay. What's this, this right here? Is what she did to one of the vehicles that I had. Now we only <laughs> we only had one vehicle. We still only have one vehicle. Mm -hmm. I just bought a new one. But anybody could have an accident. I just bought a new she, one. See? This right here is the reason why she was on her phone and went around the corner from her auntie's house, from the apartment complex, and scraped up the whole side of the vehicle. And her excuse for it was, oh, I, I didn't see the wall there. <laughs> How do you not see a whole apartment complex wall? It was narrow. The wall is kind of hard to turn. <laughs> I'm not a, he knows that I doesn't really? park very good. I'm a good driver, but when it comes to parking or trying to, you know, your Honor, she, she's tried to <laughs> face. But, 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 but she me. had one act. I mean, you know what, what I mean? But I but drove into the, the garage reason. three times. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it can happen. Why? He thinks I'm going to go cheat. That's why he calls off from work. And that's why he gets Why would the fact that she had an accident preclude you from allowing her to have the car? I it's, don't understand that. It's that. It's the fact that I even seen text messages. I, I got to the point to where I did, just didn't want it to happen anymore. I, I seen text messages to where she was telling people, oh, yeah, I'm going to have the car tomorrow. I'm going to come by and see you tomorrow. Oh, you can meet up with so me tomorrow. So it's not about her uh, capacity to drive. It's, it's about where she's going. It's that. It's where she's going. And it's the fact that she's distracted. That's all she does when she's Even driving, when she's driving? Even while she's driving. Are you using social media while you're driving? How am I on Facebook when I have to take care of my eight-year-old daughter and my people mother. People do it all the time. I drive behind people <laughs> I take who, breaks. Who, 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 yeah, da, 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 da. Are you one of them? No, I take breaks. Like, I, I'm not on social media or on Facebook, like he says. Are you texting and driving? No. 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 <laughs> I'm not. Like, I'm not. Your Honor, I've, I've got text messages or FaceTime. And he has bad road rage, so Fate. he's saying I'm texting and driving. No, he has bad road rage. And I keep telling him, Do you him, have like, road rage? No, ma'am. I'm a tow truck driver. I'll say things inside of the vehicle, but I'm not one of those individuals that get are out and do something window. about it. Yeah, I don't okay. do that. Okay. Uh, we need to have a conversation. And we will. I'm not at all sure I know what's going on. I will say this, though. If you guys don't put a period on what you're doing, you get to get a period on your cheating and a period on her cheating and whatever happened in the past and the family members that you don't get along with and make a decision to re-engage your marriage on an entirely different level, there's no point in staying married. You guys don't seem to honor the vows at all. I think you run off when things get difficult. I think you are a bit controlling. You won't want to admit it. And you think that somehow it stabilized the marriage to make sure what she's doing. You have reasons to be jealous. You have reasons to be jealous. I just don't think you guys ever engaged in this marriage uh, as a marriage. I think you got together. I think you said the words. And then you did whatever the hell you felt like. <laughs> and then 
When it didn't work out, you, you go from one problem to another, one dramatic situation to another. There were never a set of rules. There were never a set of do's and don'ts. We can't do this. Friend comes over, he looked like he wanted her, so I told her to have sex with her. What is that? <laughs> None of that makes any sense. It's all about satisfying immediate needs and wants immediately feeling better, leaving the house when you're angry, you know, having sex with all the 20, you know, women throwing out, oh, well, I'll just do it. You gotta be grown, you gotta have rules, you gotta say, these are things I won't do because I'm married. These are things I won't say. These are things, you know, you gotta honor and respect her need to be her own individual person. You can't be controlling with it because that makes her feel like nothing and you, and, and, and you can't just walk off and go out with another guy and expect him to be okay with it. I told him we were friends. We were just gonna be roommates. It, it does, you know, your, all of your stuff is so jacked up that it doesn't even matter when every once in a while you come out and do something correct, the other person's not gonna believe it because your stuff has been jacked up for so long. True. So you can't just pick through, well, this particular time I wasn't doing the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. There's no trust there. There's no rules. There's no prohibitions. It's a, it's a free for all. You know what I mean? And you got kids, right? Yeah, yes, daughter. Oh go. my God. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. If I were you, I would start anew. Mm -hmm. I would go to counseling and I would start anew. Everybody has to say, we forgive each other for all that we've done. And we're going to decide to do differently. And then have a marriage counselor sit down with you and put some rules together about how you're going to run this marriage. And remember, whatever you do to one another is done in front of your daughter. If you don't want your daughter to live the disaster that you are currently living, you've got to step up your game. And if you can't step up your game and live together in a more sane and reasonable way, decide to part and be more, uh, and be good co-parents. But you got to look at everything, not how do I feel and what's going to make me feel better right now, is but what do I want to teach my daughter? Right. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Good luck to the both of you. This matters a dream. The judge was very concerned about me and my husband's marriage, and I just feel like if he can control his controlling, problem, then we'll be okay. I mean, I feel like, yeah, I did some wrong things. I've, you know, cheated in the past or whatever, but I'm not that same person like I was back then. I've made a lot of changes and I just, you know, hope we can continue to change together. Today on Divorce Court. Okay, I'm so pleased to stop being so rigid and controlling. I was upfront with Terry about my position on, on my girlfriend having male friends. It has to end. I don't think there's anything wrong with a woman having male friends. Alfonso is fixated on a call I received from someone who isn't even an ex, and he really needs to let it go. I want the judge to help Terry understand that it's not about the phone call, it's about trusting her word. I want the judge to tell Alfonso to get past that phone call because our relationship could be great if he could just trust me. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Terry Crosby and Alfonso Dunbar. The two of you have been together for one and a half years and you have no children together. You are here because there is a rocky road that you are traversing in your relationship and you would like to smooth it out. So you've come here to ask for my advice. Ms. Crosby, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here today. We met online on a chat line. We talked for about eight hours mm -hmm. during our first phone conversation. We had a lot in common and a lot to talk about. Um, during that phone call, uh, Alfonso shared with me that he didn't want his woman to have any male friends. But during the first phone call? Yes. <laughs> the first conversation you were talking about the parameters of the relationship? <laughs> well, it was much, it was like eight hours later. So it felt more oh, like... Oh, holy! <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. 
Okay, go ahead. I met him in person a week later on February 13th. And um, we had a great date, I thought. And during that date, I asked about exclusivity because it was during a, your first date. Yes, during our first date. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I had talked to him all week, every day from the time I got off of work at 5 p.m. until after midnight. Seven hours a day on average. We talked about everything. <laughs> Too soon. I understand. You know what I mean? I don't care how long your conversations were, how good they were. Yes. Too soon. Were you alarmed by the fact that the woman that you had just met is seeking exclusivity with you immediately? I didn't really know what to think. Um, because it was early. Right. However, it didn't scare me away or anything. You just thought it was odd. I just thought it was odd. It was a few things that happened that was odd well, listen, early. On, that was happened? early. What happened? What other things happened that were odd? The fact that she shared some personal information with me early. That was you thought was too soon. Yes. And too I didn't, personal, I, too soon. Right, and I didn't understand why she, she, she did that. But again, like she said, we talked. I'd like to know what personal information. I like like her password for her phone. In the that first conversation, you gave the him first the first date. The first date. The first date. date right. You gave him the password to your phone. It wasn't exactly like that. Well, exactly it... how was it? <laughs> <laughs> the conversation. I just told him that I was ready for a committed relationship, and I had nothing to hide. And I just made a comment like. There, you can have I, the password on my phone if you want to. <laughs> well, that's not exactly how it went. But I did say, you know, my life is an open book. My security code is the same to everything. And I just blurted it out. Mm. So mm -hmm. he had mm -hmm. my password mm -hmm. to everything. So you thought that was odd? I thought that was odd. Uh, yeah. But like she said, we, we did communicate a lot. And, mm -hmm. and, and we, we really kind of hit it off early. Yeah. And all the communication we did, although it was soon it was like we probably had communicated and learned more about each other or as much as we would have in a, you know with normal people talking over six months over six months you compressed all of it into exactly. a very short period of time exactly. and you got to know each other you peeled back the layers early my understanding right. is however at the end of this first date when the date was over you went home and you said i miss you like crazy he did not respond, and you were hurt by that. Why don't you tell me how... <laughs> te explain that to me. It was actually about three weeks after the first date. Okay. I texted him often, and this particular day, I sent lyrics to the song, I Miss You Like Crazy. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to see him again. I was physically attracted to him, as you can see, he's a was there a man. Was there a long pause between the first date and when you said, I miss you like crazy, there like you had not heard from him? There were about three weeks. I had talked to him every day. Oh, okay, but you hadn't but seen I, him. Correct, and I wanted to see him again. What did you think when you saw, I miss you like crazy? I think I was just a little uncomfortable. I wasn't mm -hmm. really ready. I, mm -hmm. I, the interest was there. But it wasn't at that level yet. It, it wasn't at the level... Um, I, I just wasn't comfortable at that mm -hmm. point. Right. That well, early. Uh, I, I didn't think anything negative about I it. I understand. I, I didn't understand. You just it. weren't at that level of comfort. I, I, I'm but with you. Yeah, I got that. As soon as I stopped contacting him as much and stopped texting as often, he called for our second in-person date. Right. Which went really well. He professed his love for me and said he had felt the same way mm -hmm. about me. He was yeah. just giving it some time. Right. And he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me. And this was on the second date? <laughs> this was on the second date. <laughs> You know, I like you people. I'm going to tell you why I like you people. I like you people for a couple of reasons. You're mature black love. And I'm, I, my husband and I, I consider us mature black love. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Yes, I said, but if we don't hurry this story along, <laughs> we're all going to be collecting social security before we get to the issue. Love you both. But we're going to move forward to yes. the insecurities that you say are making this relationship complicated.
She took the call and she immediately tried to deceive me. I could tell she was trying not to let me know who she was talking to. Do you think there was really something inappropriate in her relationship with him that was inconsistent with her having one with you? I want to get to, I think, something that was a critical point in your relationship. We understand that he told you early on that he didn't want you to have any male friends. But you did happen to have a conversation, and I think it has haunted the two of you ever since. Can you tell me what happened? I accepted a call the day after Alfonso professed his love for me. In accepting that call, I was trying to be discreet. I was trying to be respectful of him because I did think about the comment he made right. about not having any male friends. Mm -hmm. But the phone call was an innocent call from someone who had been a friend to me mm -hmm. when I lost my husband nine months earlier. Mm -hmm. Why was he calling you on this particular day? It was Easter Sunday, and he just called to say Happy Easter and to let me know that his father was in the hospital. Oh, okay. Now, and Mr. I listened because he had listened. He had, he had been there for you. And in the time that I was listening, I could see that Alfonso was growing very uncomfortable, and I ended the call. Okay. Well, the phone... As, as, as soon as you could, without being rude. Right. Mr. Dunbar, give me your take on that circumstance where she got a call from a male friend that she had known before you. We were in the car. Uh, she took the call, and she immediately tried to deceive me. I could tell she was trying not to let me know who she was talking to. Now, I knew about this friend. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think he had called her around our first date. Mm -hmm. The problem with the phone call was she tried to deceive me. That's and then her reason was because she thought that I would have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. She thought that it would make me not trust her. Why is it appropriate for her to allow him to finish telling her his troubles? when his turn came. It's not... It, it's not inappropriate. What made it inappropriate was her trying to deceive me. Mm -hmm. If that was the issue, if she wanted... If she just need, If he just needed her as a friend, then... She should have been up front about it. She should have been up front about it. Mm -hmm. My issue wasn't the phone call. My issue was the way she handled okay. the phone call. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you buy her explanation that she was trying to... To, to obscure who it was because she knew about your discomfort with her having male friends? Or do you think there was really something inappropriate in her relationship with him that was inconsistent with her having one with you? At the time, I thought it was the latter. Mm -hmm. Since, it's, you know, it's a year later now. So I don't feel like that anymore. I gotcha. I got you. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to move forward and still find out how that call continued to haunt you, even though, as we now know, it was innocent. We said we would move in together, and we had some trouble making house a home because we didn't have the financial resources to do that. Mr. Dunbar, what do you have to say about that circumstance? Did you really lose 40 grand? You say he has a gambling problem. He says, it's okay that I gamble because it doesn't impede in any way the financial connection that you have. Why don't you explain to me why you believe he has a gambling problem? We said we would move in together, and we had some trouble just making house a home because we didn't have the financial resources to do that. And do you think his gambling was a part of that failure, that the, that the money was gambled away and you no longer had it to put into the household? Is this what you're saying? Yes, uh -huh. I'm saying that. But he also knew that I would take care of things and make things happen, and there was no real mm -hmm. need to worry about it. Right. Because I was going to take care of things. Yeah. And, and I did. Mr. Dunbar, what do you have to say about that circumstance? Did you, did you really lose 40 grand? I, that's not that's not an accurate number, but yes, I did. Uh, but it was, it was a my, significant amount of money. It was a significant amount of money, um, unfortunately. Oh, that's always unfortunate. But it was a significant amount of money. 
<laughs> but but it, but it was mine. I mean, I didn't take it from her. Right. And, I, and I've done my I, I've done my part. I maintain uh, my responsibilities. Uh, so in that respect, I said it didn't affect us. So at no point did like you guys had made an agreement. We're moving in together, and we were each going to contribute. And the fact that you lost that significant amount of money did not preclude you from contributing as you had promised. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Any commitment I made to her, I kept. You kept. Regarding finance. Is that true, Ms. Crosby? Well, we just got furniture to... And I have been saying, let's get furniture. We need furniture. We had no furniture. We were living like we're adults. We're mm -hmm. professional Men adults. Men don't care about no furniture. Yeah. <laughs> I will but, say that. But we have furniture now, and life is so much better. We were just saying last night at our hotel that... We miss home because we home have furniture. is now like the home. <laughs> we're sitting in the living room. We're, but we're... can I address the furniture issue? The, fur the furniture issue was was only an issue because she would pack and be ready to leave. No. Where we live at, we live because of her convenience. If it, if I was by myself, I would not live where I'm living. So with her constantly threatening to leave, I'm not Why furnishing this place. Why she to leave all the time? Just because of issues. I mean, like we what have, issues? I could ask her what she's doing uh, uh, for lunch, and she'll immediately assume that I think she's going to do something inappropriate at lunchtime. And as a response, she starts attacking me. Here's what, here's what, here, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm gleaning from the conversation. <laughs> I'm going to say it myself so we can, we can get to the end of it. <laughs> you believe that he is very insecure and controlling. Yes. And with that one little incident with that phone call, he has he it, it has bled into his psyche that it now everything that you do is suspect. And and that's why you get upset when he asks where you're going. Did I get that kind of right? Yes, but I don't get upset. I mean when he asks, I answer. And sometimes he'll just well, keep repeating. Have you ever threatened to leave? Oh, yes. So tell yes. me what prompted you to threaten to leave. I have a family member who, and again, he's, he, he's very rigid about mm -hmm. how I define family, mm -hmm. is suffering from an illness that I suffer from. Okay. Vertigo. Uh-huh. And... Suck he, out as many details as you can. He contacted... The, the family member contacted me. Yeah. About vertigo. Right. Like, what... What did it feel like? And I and I was answering him. Was this a male or a female? Yes, a male. Uh -huh. And he and he had, had a problem, problem with that. Did you have a problem about the conversation about vertigo? I don't recall. I don't even recall it. Well, <laughs> it happened. It, mm. it, it's just one of the examples of if I had said a female name called and I was talking about vertigo, he would have been like, "Oh yeah, right. wow," and right. he would have been engaged. Gotcha. 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 I'm with you. I'm going to tell you what I think, and I'm going to run. <laughs> <laughs>
to talk to a male person about vertigo. She feels like she has to watch everything she does and says and who she says it with because she's concerned about your response. Now, either one of two things are happening. You do respond in a very rigid fashion that, that precludes her from having any kind of contact with the opposite sex, or you are misconstruing his question based upon his past action as an insecurity as opposed to simply an inquiry. One of those two things may be, women need to be heard. Women don't need to be instructed. Women need to be able to tell you what's on their mind and we're gonna meander just a little bit. We're gonna start over here. We might end up over there and everything won't be directly in the line that you want, but you gotta lay back and be comfortable and hear us through, because we might end up right where you want us to be. I understand. You see what I'm saying? I understand. I think you're, no, 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 I think you're a fabulous couple. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a book called Making Marriage Work. You know why? I got a whole chapter in here on how women speak and on how men speak and how it's different and how you can bridge the hormonal divide while having a conversation. I think you would both benefit from that because I think you're fabulous people and I hope you stay together forever. You guys take care. This matter is adjourned. Alfonso comes across very rigid, but he can be very compassionate and loving and caring. He is the man of my dreams. I love him very much, and I'd like to spend the rest of my life with him. I have no issues with her. I don't. I don't have any issues with a lack of trust or, or anything. I'm, I'm confident, and, and and I love her, and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Today on Divorce Court. Arthur doesn't communicate with me, he doesn't tell me what's going on, and he does things behind my back. Ariana has to believe uh, what I'm doing, I'm doing it for us. He gambled away $10,000 that we had saved up for our kids. The reason why I started gambling is because uh, Ariana wasn't working. I knew he gambled, but I didn't know that it was a habit. I can see myself living with her forever. But she has to trust me, because I was just trying to do the best thing for us to get money into the household. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Albriana Turner and Arthur Washington. The two of you have been together for two years. You have no children together, but you have a child from a previous relationship. Yes. You guys have come to me on a before your vows. You love each other, you want to be with each other, but there are problems in the marriage and you want my opinion on the viability of your union. So I'm gonna ask you some questions and see if we can get to an answer. Ms. Turner, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got together and why you care about each other. Okay. Me and Arthur met at a semi-professional basketball team that I worked for. Uh, we went out on the longest date you can think of. Uh, we went to the arcade, we had a great time. It was nice. Did you do a good job on that first date, Mr. Washington? Well, I did an excellent job, not just a good job. <laughs> so, Get uh, it right, yeah? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Get it right. So what it is, I gave her uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of happiness on that first date. Right. To let her know that um, I'm a great guy. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent the time like on the beach, mm -hmm. a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, a long period of time. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. And so uh, she never had that. She never had uh, been held uh, up under the sunset, oh, you wow. know? Mm -hmm. And then the sun was coming up after we left as well from the beach. <laughs> Uh, so it was a 26-hour date that was unplanned. Uh-huh. So, um... But you liked her. I mean, no one goes on a 26-hour date without yeah, having those, feelings. Because when I seen her, she was in her little tutu, looking all sexy yeah, and everything. And so I'm like, like, let's have fun with it. <laughs> right? we, let's make a, a great day out of it. And we didn't want to leave each other, so we just decided, hey, that one date made us be together for our, two, our, t our entire two years right now. Right. And right. so we left, we left California, we was living in California, we left California to uh, start a new chapter, because uh -huh. uh, we left and went to Vegas. 
and then everything in Vegas kind of like... Kind of turned around on you. When did you start to see problems? The problems came when we moved to Vegas. Uh, he does have a gambling problem. Uh, not just a gambling problem. Not just a gambling problem, but he does. Uh, Give me problem. an idea of the scope of the problem. Within two months of us moving to Vegas, he gambled over ten thousand dollars. It wasn't ten thousand dollars, man. It wasn't ten thousand dollars. Don't believe that. Between don't believe seven that. and ten thousand dollars, Your Honor. Not uh, at one time, but within the it, within, within the two, course of two months, within the he lost of two ten thousand. Is that accurate, Mr. Washington? No, very untrue. Okay, this is this the thing. She didn't tell you pa she wasn't working, okay? Uh -huh, okay? She wasn't working. So I was working, and then money got low. Money got right. low, so I had to do something about it. Right. So the best That's thing true. I did was I would start gambling. She didn't tell you the pa when I was winning and eating caviar <laughs> and going out and buying clothes and be like, yeah, I'm telling the world all on Snapchat. Like, I got all this, yeah. Right, right, right. But, but the then she didn't tell you that part. I was winning. And then when I was losing, chasing the money, then she wanted to act like I'm the bad guy all of a sudden. Now, did you endorse his gambling as long as he was winning? And did you, it, did you enjoy the fruits well, of his labor? I knew he gambled, but I didn't know it was a habit until we moved to Vegas. Like, meaning I work here in California, so I travel back and forth a lot to California. Um, I left him the rent money, and he gambled it away, but he, it wasn't to my knowledge until I received the notice. Then mm. I left him money for him to pay the light bill for up for two months. He gambled it away. When I came back from California, the lights was off. So it's not the fact mm. that he's gambling, it's how he's doing it, it's what he's using, because that money is for our kids. For, yeah, to survive, yeah, right. right. Now, Mr. Washington, did you gamble away the rent money? Did you gamble away the light money? I got on partial of some of the money, not uh -huh. all of it. She 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 telling me I gambled a lot all around like we was out. We but was the lights out were out for a couple of hours, just a couple of hours, just because a couple of I hours. Because I had to have his back, Your Honor. All right. Look, Did she for... come in and pay the pay the light bill? How can she pay a light bill if she's not working? So how did she... she pay? I don't know where you got it from. From from some dude or something. But she paid it though. <laughs> That's the point. You say you don't know where she got it from, but she paid it because she got it. It don't matter. She <laughs> paid it. Yeah, I, yeah. I bet I can say that. But are you worried at all look, about how much you gamble? No, I'm not worried because I'm, I'm a working man, and I don't, I don't, I only gamble. I was just in the, in the mode of gambling. I was just in that Vegas, Vegas, uh, Vegas uh, mindset of gambling, yeah, trying to chase it, the money. When it became but, in his backyard but, is when it became the problem. Look, listen. Like, she didn't tell you about how she pawned pawn all my stuff and threw my clothes over the balcony. Then we all embarrassed. In, our, in, in, a, in an apartment complex, and, and, and then my clothes get stolen after she threw my clothes in the pool. Okay. But you're, let me, let, let me ask, what preceded you throwing his clothes in the pool and pawning all his stuff? I was very angry that my, my kids, well, our kids have to witness our lights being off, and I, then was it wasn't there. Stop, stop. I was frustrated that the way I found out that our rent wasn't paid, then I had to receive a notice. So I just was angry, and all his stuff was right there. So it just, I just started throwing it. I didn't mean for it to get in the pool. I just, just the answer it. to not having enough money is not messing up the money that you got. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just as irresponsible. I know that you were angry, but you guys got children that you're trying to take care of. You can't let how you feel and gambling. Getting stuck on gambling is a feeling problem. It, mm -hmm. it made you feel good. It made, you know, it's, it's not a logic problem. Right. And you had a feeling problem. And so you guys got to, you can't, you can't feel so much and so vastly and, and so inappropriately that your kids ain't got lights. Mm -hmm. uh, you with me on that yeah. one? Someone close to me, one of my friends, is in the gay community. So he saw him in Washington on one of the webcam sites. This particular site just happened to be a gay site. When's the last time you lost a substantial sum of money? About a month ago. A month ago. And how much money did you lose? Probably like eight to a thousand dollars. Eight to a thousand dollars. Can you imagine how much money you'd have in the bank, you know, for a college fund or something, if you had taken all of that gambling money and invested it somewhere? I mean, you, you could even just put it in the bank and let it 
Just look at it. But some of it was winnings. <laughs> Someone was losing the winnings that I won. But you always come out behind at the end of the day. At the end, but not the beginning. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If you lose money, you lose money. That's, we're going to leave that there. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Dirty, you say that he was doing a webcam sex work behind your back. Explain to me what the webcam sex work is and how he got involved. Well, someone close to me, one of my friends, is in the gay community. So he stated that he seen Arthur on the website. So he was paying for me. Hang on, hang on. He saw him in Washington on one of the webcam sites. This particular site just happened to be a gay site. It's not a gay mm -hmm. site. It's okay, men and we, women. We gonna get Dog that. cat. <laughs> okay, gay. got it, got it, got it. Go ahead. Um, so. I guess he put to where everybody can see him. It doesn't matter who sees it. No, it's just like he, he just, it's who pay, like. Who pays you? See, this, this, this what it is. It's a, it's a webcam and, and, and phone sex, right? Even if, even when you want, you want to talk to me on the webcam or you want to call me and tell me your fantasy, right? Yeah. See, on my webcam, I have a, a category of things that you may like. Things that you want so to have. Select, select select the, the things. So you, t you tell me what you like, what you want. I read it and I just make it happen. I just make your your mind. You know what I'm saying? Wanting oh if I oh, oh at that moment. Right, right. I'm telling them how they want to be touched, how they want to be right, feel. Right, Sometimes they right. just vent to me. Right, right. All day right, long. Yes. So it's like. I'm your best friend at yeah, that time. Yeah, you into customer satisfaction. Absolutely, well, one hundred percent <laughs> customer satisfaction. Did you not let your the woman that you married know how you were making money? See, see, because I knew the reaction that I would get because I got the reaction at the end. When she found out, I just told her, "Baby, look, I'm not touching these people. They're not touching me. I'm just making them feel good about themselves, right?" right? Then she really get mad at me because she overhearing me talk uh, on, on phone sex saying, oh, why you not doing me like this? And you don't got me on the jet. You don't got me on the yacht. I said, I don't got yacht money. I don't got jet money either. I'm a dollar in there, not a millionaire. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, our sex is still going. Like, you have sex on the balcony. You have sex in the bathroom. You have sex in the kitchen. You have sex on the bus. You have sex anywhere. I oh. make sure your fantasy is, is, is good. That was so much more information than I needed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm oh, yeah, I understand that the proposal was made and it went very south in a very public way, which right. is what brought you here trying to determine whether or not this relationship is going to work out. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear what happened. One of his girl, ex girlfriends or whoever she was, she started going on talking about that she's his first and only true love, and so I called him. <laughs> oh, so she called me, she cussed me out. Uh, who is her? Who is her calling me talking about, uh, <laughs> I, I love her and you love me. Who is that? Who is that? So what happened with the proposal? I proposed to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I got to be doing something good. She got to propose to me, huh? I still got <laughs> so, the ring. So, so, okay, you proposed to him. What happened? We were on the Las Vegas Bridge. Um, he didn't know nothing about it. So I told him, oh, can you come meet me at the bridge? I'm stuck right here. It was a couple of our friends who were there. It was balloons. It was a duet. It's a really nice proposal. Yeah, it was a duet singing one of our favorite songs. It was nice because he was, he was that guy. Mm. And these problems didn't become problems until after that. Yeah. The skeletons didn't come until after, after the proposal. That. Now, Mr. Washington, it was a beautiful proposal. Did you say yes? I was like a girl inside doing this. Oh, God. I wish you had to. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't show that affection. Right. I didn't show that affection because <laughs> it was it was shocking to me because <laughs> when I uh, when I was just we was around uh, people talking, you know, saying about marriage and stuff, mm -hmm. and I said, man, I'm never getting married right. unless a girl proposed to me, right? Right. And she overheard it. And when she, she did it, and ran with it, yeah, it just ran with How it. How did it go south? Um, what happened after I posted it on Facebook? I guess one of his girl ex girlfriends or whoever she was, she inboxed me. She said, uh, 
uh, I see you sent me a referral request, and I hope all is blessed and it, it's good intention, intentions. I only know you through his nickname that he used in Memphis. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, you know, at first I didn't even know who he was. I mean, who that name was. Right. So I said, who, who are you, who you talking, talking about? about? So she put his whole government name, first, middle, last. So I'm like, I know you know him because he don't use his middle name. So I know you know him. So she started going on talking about that she's his first and only true love. And uh, she even said she knows his social security number. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I didn't even argue with her. I told her to have a great day. So I called him. <laughs> oh, so she been calling me. She cussed me out. Uh, who is her? Who is her calling me talking about? Uh, <laughs> I, I love her and you love me. Who is that? Who is that? He's not responsible for what some woman is fantasizing about that he used to know in his past. He's not responsible. There's no way in the world that you can stop that behavior before it starts. If he refuses to check it once it's begun, that's another thing. But apparently he did. Right. You know and what I, I mean? You gotta be a full grown woman if you wanna be married. There's mm -hmm. gonna be free radical ratchet women out there all of the time <laughs> who are gonna try to start stuff and poke their finger in a hole, but you, but you can't let them. And she was ratchet. That's what she wanted from you, was to cause friction between the two of you. Mm -hmm. And you let her. And I ain't messed with her about 10 years ago. So, <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys do a 15 second profession of love, and then I'm gonna tell you what I think about the prospects of this union. Now, normally, when I ask a couple in my Before Your Vows to do a, a profession of love, I start with the women, because Joe told me it's not fair to start with the dudes, because you're not used to, dudes are not used to expressing themselves like that. Women should go first. But Joe says, you are so glib and together that I can start with you and you can represent for the fellas. Absolutely. So, Mr. Washington, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a whole 20 seconds. Okay. For you to tell me with no negativity, no mm -hmm. if, no maybe, no buts, no caveats, no contingencies, none of that, mm -hmm. why she is the woman for you. Well, Go. Course, well, she's the one for me because she loves my kids for one. She takes care of my uh, kids. Uh, we love sports. Uh, I love a woman that loves sports. Uh, she does a lot of things that I enjoy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I comfort her as well. Uh, may have had a gambling problem, but she always had my back no matter mm -hmm. what we was always doing. So I love her for that. Mm -hmm. And I want this to continue, but I just don't want her to uh, constantly uh, not but... believe in me. Believe in me, but it's just a but. It's a but. But, you know what I'm saying? There's no buts in profession of love. No, 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 no it's, 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 I'm cautious in, in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it cuts But I just said, wanted you to tell her why she was wonderful. She's, 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 all, she's wonderful. She's all I need. Point blank. She's a she's all she's all I need. I, I don't okay. need nothing else. Okay, well, that was a C. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Turner. Okay. Mrs. Turner, why don't you tell me 20 seconds why Mr. Washington is the man for you? No buts, no problems, no no negativity whatsoever. Well, Go. one, he took he took my son in as his own. Um, he always been there since day one through through thick and thin. He's He's an amazing guy, even though he has his little problems. I know we can get through them. And it's just, I gotcha. know, I know that all in all that he's the one for me because he's always been there and he let me down, but he always was there to pick me back up. Right. Okay. All right. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Let me tell you something. I like you. Well, I think you're kind, I think you're loving, I think you have a wonderful sense of romance. I think you care about one another. I think you're both really tall. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you need to take your gambling problem seriously, because you're too good of a man to get crushed under some nonsense like that. You got too much going for you. You're a great dude. Don't let that stupid mess knock you over, because it can knock over anybody if you don't take it seriously. Right. Gambler's Anonymous, I'm telling you. And you back him up on that. And don't get caught up, he gets makes some money and he wants to buy, uh-uh, I don't want that money. Correct. You know, don't feed it by applauding when he comes home with the extra cash. What you gotta do is be a full grown woman and say, I don't want no parts of none of that money, because it's gonna end up making us broke. Do you understand? Yes. You're young. 
You need to be a little more mature. You need to feel something, think, then do. Don't feel, then do. Right. And then make him make you think about it later. <laughs> you, you with me on that? We're 24. Yeah. You're young. So, it, it, and, and just, ain't nothing wrong with being young, but young is a silly thing. So don't do silly things, because you got a grown man here. You with me? Yes. You got to, you, you got to think about everything you're going to do before you do it. Don't just jump, think, and then marry him. And, mm -hmm. and I won't see pictures of the kids. I'll look up at them. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to both of you. This matter is adjourned. I'm going, I'm doing, definitely going to stop my gambling because I don't want to hurt my family. I don't want to uh, cause any more problems where we would get uh, divorced or fight any, any longer. So I'm going to make sure that I spend time with my family and make sure that I don't do anything wrong to uh, sabotage my relationship any longer. Today on Divorce Court. My husband, Kurt, he's accusing me of cheating. I feel like Latrice is cheating on me because she spends more time on her phone than she does with me. Kurt's drinking is very upsetting. He has a lot of harmful habits that I wish he would change. We need to communicate better instead of hurting each other with our words. I really do want to stay with Kurt. I really wish she would stop accusing me of cheating because I've never cheated. I want to make things better between us and trust me again. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Kurt Wood and Latrice Wood. Mr. and Mrs. Wood, you have been together for nine years, married for seven. You're a truck driver, you're a caregiver, and Mr. Wood, you say your marriage is in trouble because you believe in your heart that Mrs. Wood is cheating on you. Why don't you tell me why you believe that? Yes, Your Honor. Um, about January, Latrice had received a text message. She was in the shower. I looked at it and said, had a good time, are you okay? And it was one of her coworkers that did that. And then all of a sudden her coworker was on her, a friend on her Facebook too, and he mm -hmm. was single. And I asked her about it and she had panicked and freaked and, and deleted the whole message and deleted him off of Facebook. Okay, is that the only thing that causes you to believe she's cheating or is that just the most dramatic? That's the most dramatic, Your Honor. What other things is she doing that leads you to believe she's unfaithful? I feel like the affection's gone down, the attention's gone down, and she's been spending a lot more time on her, on her phone. Mm -hmm. So if you're not getting it, somebody else must be. Yes. It, it, it is pretty much what you're saying. Yes, Your Honor. You're feeling unloved. Yes. Mrs. Wood, he's feeling unloved and he feels that your affections are elsewhere. Why don't you tell me your response to that? I have never cheated on my husband. Um, the text that he, that he saw was not, I don't think it was meant for me because I've not, I've never sleep, I've never slept with that man. The employment situation notwithstanding, where's the love, Mrs. Wood? I feel like I'm always getting accused of cheating even when in any, even, especially when, you know, I'm not even doing anything. Has that been all along, or is it just when this particular circumstance? I think it's been all along. I mean, he's a, this is just a, that was just a, a serious one, one, but a bigger issue, but that, it's, it's been all along. Like, Have you not trusted her all along, Mr. Wood? Probably, yes, Your Honor. And why is that? Because in the past, I've had previous relationships where they have cheated on me, and, and, um, uh, the insecurity. Mm -hmm. and yeah. just... You know, when someone cheats on you and you carry that with you, jealousy will set up a fun house in your head. It's a whole bunch of distorted mirrors and you're looking through everything through the lens of it's happened before and this one small thing happened before so, and it looks like what happened over here because your brain is always scanning the territory for harm and, and, and you're looking for, for what's going to frighten you and you see anything that would implicate that. Are you, 
Are you hearing me on that one? Yes. Yeah. You are right. Do you believe she loves you? Yes, I do. You're right. Okay. Ms. Wood? Yeah, he even put a tracker on my phone to see where I'm at, at work. I Ms. Felt... Ms. Mr. Wood, did you do that? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. And did you find that she was going places she didn't need to be? No. Did it calm you when you found that she wasn't doing anything that you could track? Yes. It did calm you? Yes. But it didn't completely cure you? No. What do you think she could do that would cure you? I don't... I mean, the affection and the attention and, 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 and that, I feel like it needs to be a little more, but I don't think it's her. I think it's me, Your Honor. Why do you think it's you? Because of the life that I've led. I mean, the life, you know, I've got a lot of stuff in the past that, mm -hmm. and issues. Right. So it's hard to love you past all the stuff that you're doing, that you, you're thinking. Yes. Because you're thinking that, and she can't love. Well, Mr. Wood, let me tell you this. You're very self-aware. I don't get that in here very often. And I appreciate the fact that you're very, you can see the level of your dysfunction. You can't fix it, but you can see it. So I got something I can work with over here. <laughs> Ms. Wood, Mrs. Wood, now we, now he's self-aware. Let's see how self-aware you are. Do you have any idea how to love him past his hurt? Yes. What is it you do in an attempt to love him past his hurt? Say something good, Mrs. Wood. I try to tell him that I love him. I try to tell him I'm, I would never hurt him. I would never cheat on him. And I try to hug him and I try to kiss him. And I guess I just don't do it enough. Mm -hmm. That's something I need to work on. You know, men need to feel marvelous, whether they're marvelous or not. They need a lot of applause. <laughs> This is not negative. This is not man bashing. Women need a lot of I love you's because that's the way we're built. They need a whole lot of applause. They need to, wow, baby, that was good. Man, you know what I mean? Even, you know, oh, wow, look at how you took that trash out. Anything. <laughs> you need to feed his ego a bit. They need to feel puffed up and respected. And, and, and it's not, no, there's no, nothing wrong with it because we need a whole lot. You got to tell me you love me 12 times a week at least. I know you do. You've been with me 30 years, my husband, but you still got to say it. And, and it's just because that's the way I'm built. Do you puff him up? Do you, do you tell him he's wonderful with anything? I try to tell him, like, if he cooks something, I'd be like, oh, that was really good. You did a really good job cooking. Anything like... else? <laughs> <laughs> If he does something like that he normally doesn't do, I try to say, oh, that was really, thank you. That was really nice of you to do that. Like, he'll just cook something for me and take it to me or clean something up. And I'll be like, oh, thank you for doing that. Do you feel longer. respected and appreciated? Sometimes I do, yes. Uh huh. Sometimes I do. What would you like that you're not getting? More attention, more affection. I mean, I want to feel like I'm wanted, Your Honor. I want to feel like I'm needed. I tell her all the time that she's needed and she's loved and I, I want her. And I don't feel that back. I don't feel like she wants me or needs me. That you have value in her life. Yes. Did, did you hear? You seem so grossly unaffected. You just don't seem, I mean, your man's over here in tears. Uh, and I think one of the ways in which he is seeking attention has to do with your sex life. So we will turn to that now and see where that's off. Okay. So I offered to bring someone else into the bedroom or other couples into the bedroom. And I felt that Male, was... female, male, male, or it doesn't matter? It don't matter. What did you say when he first told you about that? Mr. Wood, you say the intimacy in your marriage is not there like you would like it to be. Why don't you tell me what is or is not going on at your house? Okay. For the first couple of years, we did really good together, seven mm -hmm. years, and then all of a sudden I accumulated erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So instead of having, instead of worrying about her cheating on me and stuff, because I know a woman needs to be satisfied, especially as beautiful as she is, and 
So I offered to bring someone else into the bedroom or other couples into the bedroom. And I felt that Male, was, female, male, or it doesn't matter? It don't matter. Do you put up with it or do you enjoy it? I enjoy it, but I want her to enjoy it too. You enjoy watching her? Yes. With other guys? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Wood, um, what did you say when he first told you about that? I told him <clears throat> I told him I was not happy about that. I told him I didn't really want to do anything like that. Because I felt like it's cheating, even though it's, he says it's not, but I feel like it's cheating. Did you do it anyway? Yeah. Often? Yeah. How often is often? Mm, two or three times a month. Mr. Wood, does, has that resolved your sexual frustration or, or enabled you to perform in a manner that you couldn't otherwise? A little bit better, yes, Your Honor. Yeah. When she enjoys it, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you enjoy it? I mean, sometimes, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I, you know, we about the same age, and I just, I just feel like I, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and I ain't mad. You know what I mean? Everybody got to do what makes everybody, all three of y'all happy. I, you know, I, who am I to criticize? Um, Mrs. Wood, we, I want to talk about other things that might be involved, because you believe that Mr. Wood is an alcoholic. Yes. And you say you're not. No, I'm not, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, but how much do you drink on the daily? Because you said it in here. I usually drink about a half a gallon of whiskey. We're going to talk about how much you drink, why you drink, and what that drinking might be doing to you and what it's definitely doing to her. He really didn't say a whole lot. He just went up to get all my clothes and threw them out on his curb and said, get out. He, he threw all your clothes out on the curb? Yes. Mr. Wood, did you do that? So, Mr. Wood, you told me you drink a half a gallon of alcohol every... Right. Every night. Yes, Every right. night. Yes. Every night. But you don't think you're an alcoholic. No, Your Honor. So if I went over your house, took all your booze from you, and you say, would. stay here till for two days, would you be all right? No, Your Honor. <laughs> that kind of defines what alcoholism is. It's not necessarily how much you drink, it's the fact that you can't do without it. Yes. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Now, I'm going to get deeper still. My mother told me to be a doctor. I said, ah, I want to do this instead. So I'm not a doctor. But do you think that maybe the half gallon of booze that you drink preclude you perform from performing sexually as you would like? No, Your Honor. <laughs> Did you ask your doctor? Yes. And he said, he said the half gallon of booze is fine? No, he, he said it was not, Your Honor. Yeah. And you know one has, is related to the other. Yes. I've been here a while, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. Would you to... stop the booze in order to get more love? I, I, I did stop for a while. I came down with pneumonia. Uh-huh. And... Well, then you were too sick. I mean... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell me how alcohol has affected you and your relationship? Um, various stories, but one, New Year's Eve one time, we were all sitting around and... He got really drunk, and for some reason, he just stood up and said, I want a divorce. I was like, okay, why do you want a divorce? What did I do? We were just having a good time, and nothing was wrong. And then he really didn't say a whole lot. He just went up to get all my clothes and threw them out on his curb and said, get out. He, th he threw all your clothes out on the curb? Yes. Mr. Wood, did you do that? Yes, Your Honor. Do you recall that incident, or are you one of these people who drink and then don't remember what happened the next day? There's a couple times. There there are times that I do black out, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. You don't see that as a problem either? I do see that as a problem, yes, You Your do Honor. see that and as I, a problem. I have tried to slow down on that, yes, Your Honor. So you you want to continue drinking, you just don't want to black out anymore? Yes. All right, yeah. hey, that's I, progress. I do, I do get stupid when I black out, so. Yeah, and everybody, I mean, when you drink too much and you, you don't record what you're doing, you, you anybody gets stupid, it, it, it's what happens. I want to talk about your pressures with respect to money because you say Mrs. Wood has a hard time keeping a job and that you find the fact that she doesn't contribute economically stressful to your union. Tell me about that. Your Honor, she does try to contribute, but she always 
there, there always seems to be an issue for her. She's not happy where she's at, or somebody's being racist, or there's always There's a always reason. something. Always something, yeah. She's been through like four or five jobs just this year alone. and, and mm -hmm. Mrs. It's... Wood, what, what's the issue with employment? There's just, well, I really wanted to get a job where I'm helping more. So I get jobs thinking I'm going to get paid a lot more than I, than I thought I was. And I feel like I, when we sit down and do budget, it's, it's never enough. So I seek other jobs to get more money. Sometimes yeah. it's, it's unhealthy at places that I've been, but mainly it's to get more money. To so you, to when you quit a job, you already have another job? Yes. Is that true? Not all the times, no. Do you understand that he's feeling pressured because he needs economic support from you? Yes. Because sometimes, even if you have a job that you're not making enough, making not enough is a whole lot better than making none at all. Yeah. So you don't quit. You stay until you get a better paying job. And also, you have to take a look at your resume, too. If you quit jobs every two months, the employers that really are going to pay well aren't going to look at you favorably because she's a job jumper. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Also. Huh? Yeah. <laughs>you guys are in the washing machine of an emotionally unexamined marriage and I want to open the door and get the clothes out okay now I, both of you are contributing to your own problems you have a history of being cheated on that informs how you look at things and you see cheating everywhere and in return to relax yourself to calm yourself and I think you need to get to the underlying issue of your concern and, 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 and your lack of uh, self-esteem because you, you're worried that she's cheating, you say she doesn't value you or appreciate you, and you're drinking and you can't have sex unless you're watching her with another dude. A lot of that, to me, speaks of a, a lack of self-respect and centeredness. And I think that's something that you need to deal with. Mrs. Wood, you need to help him with that. Like I said, men need to feel wonderful. Be effusive with him. The guy is fighting battles. You have to be fighting that battle with him and not just mad about the things that he's not doing well. You need to help him fight that liquor. You need to help him fight that jealousy. You need to help him fight that sexual dysfunction. And it can't be, well, he's not giving me everything. I mean, you got to be in there swinging for him. You, you with me on that one? <laughs> Because if nothing else is clear to me in this union is this man loves himself some you. He really, really does. He's got issues. Ain't no fun being with a drunk. If you lit all the time, you can be getting love that you don't perceive because you too looking up to see it. Everybody's got to lean into the other one's problems like it's their own as opposed to looking to what the other person's problem is doing to them. Are you with me on that? <laughs> He loves you to death. To the extent he doesn't show it to you, it's because he can't. If you love him to death and effusively and loudly, he will be able to give you more what you need. Everybody always asks, I, I'm not doing this because he's not doing that. I'm not doing this because she's not doing that. If you start not worrying about what they're not doing for you in a good union, because this is a good union, you worry about you always worry about what he's needing, and you always worry about what she's needing, and then all of a sudden you start fulfilling needs instead of, instead of falling to each one, one another's sins. You, you with me on that one? Mm -hmm. Good yeah. luck. I'm going to get somebody to get you started. But good luck to two of you, because you're, you're a good couple. I'm going to get you started. Rock and roll. And then, can, can I keep up with you? Yeah. I, 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 I want to know what's happening. I, 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 and, and I want to know about the dudes. <laughs> I want to know about the alcohol. I want to know about it all. You drink less, you love more. This matter is adjourned. The judge thinks that I have a serious alcohol problem. Um, I will try to slow it down and, and work on that issue, yes. Yeah, he still believes in cheating and... One thing I can do is just show him more affection and show him more attention and reassure him that I'm not cheating.